having a few more. Yeah. Uh, Kenny, you, you and I were talking a little bit, and there's been a lot of shifting and shaking going around during the past week, particularly up front. Tell us about our offensive line tonight, Kenny. Well, we're going to have two sophomores, two juniors, and one senior. Tackles, guards, and center. And uh, there's, you know, that's been something they've been juggling with since the first game of the season, if y'all remember, and you probably don't. Uh, that first group had only been together for less than 30 hours the two days prior to that first game. And so it's a, it's a work in progress. We've had some injuries, uh, but, I, you know, the coaching staff is trying to find a combination that gives us the best chance to win because, it's you know, it's critical that you get those blocks. <laughs> Last week, you know, we uh, we had an extra point blocked, and, and uh, you know, we just didn't step right. Yeah. And a uh, guy came up the middle untouched. And uh, you look back at the ball game, and we wound up getting beat 14-13. We get that extra point. You know, we're tied, got a chance for overtime. So, And, two, there was a couple of plays where, uh, you know, it's our, our guys are just green. We didn't have many starts among our, our uh, offensive line early in the year. So it's uh, – you say, well, I mean, why are you still working on this late in the season? Well, you ain't got any choice. We're fighting for our lives now. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing you got to do, you know, in pretty much anything in life, you got to adjust on the fly sometimes, you know. Well, and it's crazy to beat for, for, with the district or region record that we've got to beat in a position where we got to win, win one of the, these last two. I mean, we're sitting uh, here looking at it. I mean, we're four I mean, and how, one. How does that happen? I mean, <laughs> we're. we're I mean, good grief. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, look, any other any other year, we're in. You know? Any other year, we're in. All righty, it's getting... Well, you can hear the War Eagle faithful hooping and hollering, and the War Eagles have taken the field. Kenny, we were talking, and I don't even know what happened in the coin toss. Did they have one? I they didn't they see had one. one. They were out there. Uh... We're going to find out in a minute because they're getting ready to kick this thing off. Well, I was mesmerized by the uh, blue jerseys that Laurel's wearing tonight. You know, they're celebrating oh, uh, the, the school here that was here and been out of business for quite some time. And they were the Dragons. I know that. And uh, Oak, Oak High School, I should have known that, folks. I apologize for not knowing that. But uh, they're having – you know, when we were here last last time we were over here, year before last, they had a recognition and they played they these did. blue uniforms. So, and I think we won that game. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to hope that, that luck holds. And head coach over here at Laurel is Ryan Ernest, uh, who coached uh, several years as an assistant in Wayne County, left, got a head coaching job at college. And yeah. Went off over there and won him a state championship. and A uh, couple of them. Yeah, and uh, so here he is uh, over here in Laurel, Mississippi, trying to do the same thing with this program. Back home. That's got to be special. Yeah. He's a great guy. We he love is. Ryan. He did a great job at Wayne County for us. Uh, well, Wayne County's going to receive the opening kickoff here, Kenny. And uh, so either way, whether we won or lost the toss, we get the ball. That's, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, we get it first. And here we go, getting ready to kick it away. Ours is a pretty high kick. It's going to come down somewhere around the 30 and be caught on the run right there by. I don't. Let's see if I get. That's Bakari McCall do everything. That's a Swiss Army knife if there ever was one, Kenny. Man, he's amazing. I tell you what, that youngster's probably been out there painting on the field, too. <laughs> he might have painted that tornado out in the middle of the field. Yeah. Here it comes. Let's see. Uh, the defense is set. I tell you what, this is a big, rugged looking, looking bunch that Laurel's got out there on the field. Well, they are. I mean, it's. we said it in the coaches' show, um, rinse and repeat. I mean, just big, strong, fast athletes. All righty. Uh, the Warriors were out there first and 10th. They're on 35. After the McCall catch, he caught it and began about five yards. There's a handoff to Evans, Kenny, and he's going to pretty get a couple of yards, maybe on uh, maybe give him three on the first down carry. Ball carry stacked up by Mr. Tornadoes, led by number five. Number 22, Connor Adams is checking into the game. Big wide out. And uh, we've got a war eagle coming out. That's uh, another guy that plays a lot of spots. Uh, Michael Hudson, he snaps and plays defense and offense and 
he's pretty much all over the place. Okay, they got the, got it in there, bunched in pretty tight. And uh, Hankins is under center with a second down, and we'll say eight. Going to be the handoff over here, and uh, going to be get a, maybe, I don't know if you're going to get the line of scrimmage or not. It kind of, they brought the wing back in and hand it to him, and uh, couldn't yeah. get anything going. That was Eddie Poole, Jr., on the carry. Yeah, he, he got back to the line of scrimmage. Picks up no gain, brings up third down and eight for Wayne. Third down and eight for the War Eagles. 10.56 to go in the first quarter, opening possession of the night. And again, I just want to really give some recognition to this this crowd from Wayne County. I mean, you know, it's a it's a it's a very respectable turnout over here tonight. They're not bunched in there tight again in this wing system. We'll call it back to throw. Hank is going to throw one. It's going to be uh, a pass interference, I believe, Kenny. Yeah, a little little grab and pull there by the <laughs> by the safety. Uh, while we're waiting on to mark this off, let me go ahead and send out a. Uh, hello to Mr. Sherman Balls, and he and Miss Faye listed at home. We want to send out condolences to his family, Joey Waller and Jason uh, Rogers. His wife passed away from cancer uh, this morning. Jason's a nurse practitioner in the emergency room at Wayne General. Got to say hello to little man, to Katie, Emily, little Marshall, Mama, Pops, Granny. <laughs> I miss anybody this time? I think you got them. Okay, I, I got them got all. Him. All right. Wayne County's got a first and 10 across midfield at the 48 of uh, Laurel on that pass interference play. That was a big that was a big help, Kenny. Well, it was, and right when you needed it. All right. There's going to be a handoff to Evans, and he's going to find some room. Kenny making his way. Now he's into the 30, close down around the 26-yard line. Troy Evans on the carry. Troy is having a good year. He had a big week last week, and uh, he comes in on the year. He's uh, – you know, got 391 yards on 79 carries, and so uh, he can tote that mail. 23-yard gain in the first down. At the 25 of the Tornadoes with 10-16 to go in the first quarter. Wayne County's on the move. Got two receivers out wide to the right, and uh, a tight end on the left side. There's going to be a handoff around the left side again. Got some room. No choice. Going to put his head down again and get – just may have got inside the 20. Got down close to it. Just uh, we we got an extra guy over here and kind of got him outnumbered. Yeah, and that 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 guy playing tight end. Of course, I called out him a little earlier, and he does a little bit of everything. That's Michael. Got Michael a timeout. Oh, K Dog's got us a timeout. So we're going to take a break to go to WABO for a word from our sponsors. We'll be back after this message. We're doing a lot of tuning and manipulating up here as we're trying to broadcast at the same time. Anyway, second down and about six to go for Wayne County. There's going to be another handoff again, and there's uh, Blue Jet Abney coming in on the from the outside, cutting up the field. They bring those receivers across in there, and they'll hand the ball to them off and on. Third down and about, what, three or four, k Dog. Yeah, he's uh, going to be third and about two. got to get to the 15. Ball's on about the 17. That's a big look at that nose. Look at that, that defensive tackle over there, Kenny. He's bigger than anything on the field. Boy, he's a good one. All righty, big play right here. Third down and a couple to go. Hankins is under center. Got one man out wide to the right. There's going to be a handoff and a nice nifty move right there. And he might have given up the first down. He's going to be close. That was Abney again coming in from a wing, and he's – Let's see where they spot it, Kenny. He's, he, I thought he made it if they give him his forward progress. They're going to spot him short, though. They don't give him that progress. Oh, it's close. About a, about a size nine shoe. <laughs> 8.46 to go in the first. War Eagles with a fourth and inches down here. Got to get to the 15. Big package comes in. Billy Cooter's going to be out here up front, and uh, Hopkins is in there. 
Kieran Hawkins, one of our captains tonight. And uh, we'll see if they – probably in the past, that's a mighty big guy at the nose there. They'll see if they'll try to push uh, Carter by him or not. They don't hand it to Evans, and he's going to get the first down, Kenny. I think Carter probably said might be a better idea to run away, <laughs> not try to run over that guy. First down, Wayne County. Yeah, just a good job, just bullying your way ahead and uh, good surge by the Wayne County line. First down, War Eagles, 8.04 to go in the first quarter. Wayne County's in the red zone. They're down at, uh, looks like the 13 yard line. 7.56 and counting. Wayne County's cheerleaders, you can, I'm sure you can hear them in the band. You can hear Laurel's band and Wayne County's cheerleaders. All righty. First and 10, Wayne County. At the line of scrimmage, one man out. There's a man kind of in the motion jet sweep. Abney, he's going to get on the outside. Kenny, he's going to turn up. Going to be close to a first down. Pretty nice run. They've run him about three or four times like that already tonight. Yeah, they're they're loading up and running to the to the left side. I second down about a yard to go. Here comes the big package back in. Second down about a yard to go. What they got to get to the. Well, they got to get, oh, man, they're inside the five. They have to get yes, to the, the uh, four. Yes, on the, got to get on the four. We got to get to the three. All righty, with a second down and one to go. All bunched in there. Everybody's in there tight. Connor, uh, Carter's going to take a timeout. Well, so I tell you what, let's take, we got such good sponsors, and we appreciate them all so much. We got a chance, so we're going to take a, a 30 second break to hear from one of our sponsors and be back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to give me a shout-out to my old buddy, Rhett. He's down there uh, listening in. I, I don't even want to hear about it because he's got a pot of something on <laughs> the stove down there. Him and Anna, he got it. My it, phone ain't rung all day. <laughs> I guarantee you there's some good eating going on down there, buddy. You know it is. All righty. Holler us up a victory, Rhett. All righty. Here comes up. Well, the defense, uh, Tornadoes are out there ready to play some defense. Wayne County is still over here in the sideline. Coach Hankins is uh, coaching them up down there, laying it all out for them. And here come the War Eagles with a second and one. The three-yard line is the yard line to make it for a first. 6.44 to go. Opening drive of the game. Wayne County's had the ball. There's going to be a handoff to There's Evans, and there he goes. And he's going to get close, Kenny, if he doesn't get in. He's going to have a first down. They have not signaled touchdown. It's I going, thought he crossed the goal line. I did too. Well blocked, well executed. We got a, you know, like you talking about that young offensive line that makeshift line they put together tonight's doing a good job so far. It's going to be first and goal for Wayne County. They're staying in there. Everybody's packed in tight. Two backs behind uh, Hankins under center. Man in motion. Hopkins moving to the right. They're going to hand the ball to the right side. And there he goes. That's going to be a touchdown, Wayne County. Was that uh, Hopkins on? The, was that Hopkins on the carry? The I defensive end. They bring him in in the big package, and I believe, no, that's Choya. That's no, Choya. It was Choya. It was Choya. Football. Yeah, it was Choya. I thought maybe you knew something. I didn't. Well, I saw that. I couldn't read the numbers. What numbers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got numbers. Uh, if it's on the on the uh, touchdown, Kyle Clark on the. Try to kick it, and I believe it's blocked, Kenny. And that's kind of reminiscent of what happened to us last week. We got down there and scored first and had a blocked extra point, and it's six to nothing. So uh, we're going to hang around here for a minute. You know, Wayne County got the had good field position on 35. They had a third and long, got a pass interference, which gave them a first down. They took advantage of the penalty and managed to drive the ball on down and get in the end zone to six points. 
but again, got bitten by the mixed extra, missed extra point bug. So uh, <clears throat> that, that hurt him bad last week, Kenny. Hope it's not a deja vu all over again, as old Yogi Berra would say. It's a 10 plays, 65-yard drive. Six minutes and 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Wayne County up six to nothing after the Evans touchdown run. And we had a fourth and fourth down conversion in that. We, we had sure a fourth did. less than one. Sure did. Uh, you hear a lot of a lot of folks talking this analytics stuff in the in the uh, college level these days, and a lot of fourth, a lot of folks, you know, fourth down. You never. A lot of people go for it now. Well, they you do. Know, it's a numbers game. They do, and we do know, a lot. As they say, the numbers never lie. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I've if somebody ran some analytics at Florence and <laughs> punted from uh, or ran a fake punt from inside their own five, I've, I got to wonder about what kind of calculator they're using. <laughs> well, they did it, and it worked. It worked. No, it didn't work. Most did amazing it? thing. Uh, no. Uh, well, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. They yeah, got did. a first down. Yeah, they did. Didn't last long. Look who's kicking off. Carter Hankins. Carter's going to put a good, pretty good foot in it. And it's going to go. Smoke. My goodness, it's caught and fumbled down inside the five. And Wayne County's gonna, got a chance to tackle him deep. And he's going to slip down at around the nine. So they caught him off guard. And Hankins put a foot into it and kicked it inside the ten. Kicked it down to about the four, didn't he? Well, as, as the old boy that got run over by the train, he said, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Oh, Rattle know what I'm talking about. I said he can throw and he can kick too. He'll know. <laughs> <laughs> and he can kick too. All righty. 6.04 to go in the first. Six to nothing. Wayne County lead. Laurel with the ball. Nosed up to inside their own 10 down here. So let's see what the War Eagle defense can do to keep them in check. There's going to be a handoff up the middle and he's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage by the War Eagle defense. And, uh, that, now, that's number 23, and we see him around the football a lot from his defensive position. Hopkins, Akiran Hopkins, one of our captains tonight, and he's a leading tackler on the team coming in tonight. Kenny was 61 coming in tonight, and he had one of the total right there. That's 62 on the year for him. Second down and about 11 to go for Laurel inside their own territory down here. Inside their own 10, there's going to be a – Going around, around. He got room. Key. He's got a lot of running room. He's on the edge, and I don't know. They got some angles on him. They catch him across the 40, cuts back inside, and they're going to get him out around the 44. So, uh, Laurel speed, that's nothing unusual, is it? No, not at all. Had them backed up there inside their own five, and uh, man, here they are out to the 40, their own 44, I think, with a first and 10, trailing Wayne County 6 to nothing, 523 to go in the first. Wayne County had some guys, took some good angles on him and headed him off at the pass. All right, back to throwing, going to fire one down the field. It's going to be caught and the guys breaking tackles and running into the cross War Eagle territory down around the 45. I was looking at the deep man. He looked like he might have shot at him. But he pulled up and threw to the short guy and it turned into a, I don't know, he might have got a first down. He picks up another. <coughs> yeah, he did, first down. Laurel's on the move. They're at the 45 of Wayne County with 4.56 to go in the first quarter. And the uh, Warriors are going to track the tornado running back down. Braden Mills giving chase from offside. Looks like uh, Lacey was in on that stop as well. So it's going to bring up second down at about nine. 4.41 to go in the first quarter. Six to nothing. Wayne County lead. The tornadoes are in Warrior territory with a second down. Two receivers wide right. Wayne County got a whole bunch of folks coming off sides there. And that's going to be against the War Eagles. There was more than one went. There was about three or four of them went. That gives them five. Going to bring up second down in about, about four, it looks like. 4.28 to go in the first. 6 to nothing. Wayne County lead. The Tornado's on the move. There's going to be a handoff, and uh, they hit him in the backfield. He runs through people, and he just running. He ran through about four or five War Eagles. That's the guy Coach Hankins was talking about with you and your, yeah. your show about how big and strong he was. And I'm telling you what, he's we a, hit him three or four times. Man, had and he him, just ran through those tackles. They had him when he got the football, and he just ran right through them. First down for uh, Laurel. They're inside the 30 down here, probably around the 27, with a first and 10. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. 
Six to nothing, Wayne County lead. Tornado's on the move. They're going to hand the ball to the big guy again, and they're going to trip him up for a maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. Hopkins over there around the bottom of that pile. Second down. 342 would go in the first. Six to nothing. War Eagle lead. Second and 10 for the Tornadoes. They're at the 28 yard line of Wayne County. Trips right, single man left, single back set. I love this facility. Great place to play football over here and witness a football game. Between the bricks, Laurel. All right, the quarterbacks are looking to run all the way. And he's going to turn it up field. Got some room. Kenny going to get himself inside the 20 for a first down. He's got some wheels on him. He can go. He does. He's not a real big guy, but he's got a lot of big guys in front of him. He sure does. That's a first down for Laurel. They're Nope, I'm sorry. It's third and two. I thought he had more yards. No, he, he made the 19. Okay, my bad. Third down and two, 253 in county in the first quarter. Six to nothing, Wayne County lead. Laurel's at the 19. Might get the 17 is the yard line to make for a first or somewhere thereabouts. There's going to be a handoff to Big Man, and uh, he's going to – Fight and lean, Kenny, and he's going to be mighty close. I He'll have he's that first get... down. Yeah, he's at 17. Stops the clock at 228. First down for Laurel. They got a fresh set of downs inside the red zone. They're out there at the uh, they're at the 14. Now, this 16. Is you, 16. You got to be careful because this is where they uh, they lull you to sleep and then throw the ball on you. And Wayne County's going to jump off sides again. That's twice on this drive. The War Eagles have jumped off sides. Number 91 is checking in. Elijah Davis, a uh, sophomore. And a freshman, Paris Evans, checking in as well. She First put the ball around the 11, maybe. Uh, you're right on. First and five, 209 to go in the quarter. Six to nothing, Wayne County lead, but Laurel is threatening. There's going to be a handoff around the left side. They're going to string him out, Kenny. And he's going to fall on the ground, but he's going to get back on it, and he's going to come back out to somewhere around the 15. That was a uh, – Hopkins was there trying to get it, but the uh, ball came loose, and the Tornadoes were able to cover it up. 147 to go in the quarter. 6 to nothing. Wayne County leads. Second and nine for Laurel. And uh, Tornadoes are looking back toward the sideline. See what Coach Ernest is dialing up for them. Trips right, single man on the left side. Balls on the left, hash mark, moving left to right. 124 and counting in the first. Six to nothing, Wayne County lead. Quarterback looks to run all the way, Kenny, and they're going to get out there and string him out, and they're going to stop him uh, probably about six or seven yards short. We'll see where they spot it. Ball's going to be around the uh, 13. All right, they're going to bring up third down. Looks like about seven yards to go for a first down. It's hard to get used to seeing Laurel in those blue jerseys. Well, it is. All right, back to throw, moving to his right. Going to fire one out there to a wide open man at the 10. There's a flag comes down. He gets into the end zone. It's going to be a hold. He, but there is a flag down, and it's a hold. It's going to be a hold. He was wide open, was number 10 for the Tornadoes, and that's the Tornado Sirens going off, but they can turn that off for right now. Lyndon Pitts, Austin Lyndon Pitts checking into the game. So a uh, couple of penalties so far have really hurt Laurel tonight, gave us you know one on our, our drive when they held a, a pass interference, and then this one was holding, and uh, that's backed them up to the 29. They got to get down to the 11 for a first down. Uh, no, they got to get down to about the, the six, five. The six. Yeah, six. somewhere right in there. It's going to be third and 23. 108 in the quarter, six to nothing, Wayne County lead. Here comes the play, back to throw. There's some pressure. They get after him, Kenny, and they got to hit him up. He's got the ball on the ground. Billy Cooney's got the ball, 300 pounds. Headed downfield, he makes a move. He, he's, there's a, 
down across midfield and down to about the 36. There is a flag or a, is that a ball mark? Uh, is that a flag or a spot marker? I think it's spot marker. Billy Cooley picked that. I don't know if he caught that thing in the air, scooped it up, and uh, 300 pounds was rolling. He was shaking and baking. <laughs> That's a well. There is a flag uh, up here around the 42 yard line. That's probably against against Wayne County for an illegal block or something. We're at 56 to go in the first quarter. What a big play by the War Eagle defense, and they're going to get the ball at their own 49 with 56 to go in the first quarter up six to nothing. What an exciting play. You don't get to see the big men run very often, do you, Kenny? No, you don't. Heads and up there's forward. a reason for that. <laughs> Great field position for Wayne County. Yeah, they, they Laurel put the ball on the ground a couple of times and we were able to get one of them. All righty, Hankins and company ready to go again with a pretty good field position. A six-point lead in the football close to midfield with 56 seconds to go in the first quarter under center. It's going to be a handoff to uh, Abney, and he's going to cross midfield and uh, maybe get uh, a couple of three yards. We'll see where they spot him. I think they'll give him the 49-yard line on the other side, so about two yards. That's about the fourth time he's carried the ball on that play tonight. They're running that pretty pretty steady. Second and eight, we'll say. 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. Six to nothing, Wayne County lead. Ball's on the left hash mark. Pool split wide right. Everybody else is... Uh, Inside, and the wing set under center. Looking to throw, going to fire one out there. And I, that was a misread. I think uh, Poole pulled up short. And Connor was throwing that thing outside the numbers down there around the 30. That was a mis miscommunication between the quarterback and the receiver. Brings up third and eight with four seconds to go in the first quarter. What did you see there, Kenny? Is that what you saw? Miscommunication. I, don't know, I saw the water boy have to move over there on the far hand side, as Uncle Gene would say. What anybody, any receiver? Yeah, I, I think Eddie went there and sat down, and, and somehow he and he and Carter got kind of cross-threaded there about who was supposed to do what. All right, third down. They're going to hand it to a little misdirection there. And they're going to tackle Pool behind the line of scrimmage, so uh, that's going to be the end of the first quarter. And Wayne County's going to be looking at fourth down when they come back with a six to nothing lead after one. So we're going to take a 30-second break to WABO to hear from one of our fine sponsors and be back after this word. Is that supposed to be red? Jack, you got problems? We can't get speed. That's red. Yeah, because we don't have any speed. Okay. We have signal, but no speed. We may just have to unload it. Back between the bricks to start the second. One quarter down, Wayne County up six to nothing. And uh, West, let's see. West is playing uh, Hattiesburg tonight, and West uh, is up six to nothing. They had a blocked extra point, just like Wayne County did. Our man from Mississippi Sports Talk, the Lizard. Reporting in. All righty, Kenny, we've got a punting situation. Braden Mills is uh, stepping out to punt for Wayne County. Uh, ball is at the Wayne County 49, and they ran out of downs, and they're going to have to punt it away. So after one, six to nothing. Mills has got a – looking for somebody on the uh, missing one out there, I believe. They're going to get a delay a game penalty on this. That's going to – it's going to cost them five. Couldn't get the, couldn't get the punt team on the field. Somebody didn't have their head in the game. Back them up five to the 44. Six to nothing, War Eagle lead. 
Mills on to punt it away. Hudson to snap it. Mills got a big leg. Good snap, little pressure. What a punt, Whew. what a rocket. Gonna be fair caught down at the, uh, somewhere around the 15, that may take it out to 16 or 17. That's had some hang time on it, didn't it, Kenny? Boy, it did, and uh, that's a 39 yard punt in the air. And no return. All righty, Wayne County's had two possessions in the first quarter, and Laurel had one. And uh, Wayne County got six and Laurel got nothing. But the Tornadoes are back and ready to go again with the first and 10 from their own 16. Get some time running in here in this second quarter. Trips left, single man right. Uh, hand off the running back. He's going to get chopped down short of the 20. Going to get, what, four yards? Yeah, he kind of got a abruptly taken out, got his knee taken out from under him. And that, uh, that's going to make him a little tender there, I think. Yeah, that was, uh, I stretched him out pretty good. 11.33 and counting in the second quarter. Second down and we'll say six to go. There at the 20, got to get to the 26 for a first down, do the Tornadoes. There's going to be a quarterback keeper up the middle. He's found a gap. Kenny, here he goes. Now, I don't know. They better hem him up because he's hard to catch. He's going to get across to 45, and uh, Bakari McCall is going to try to finally get a hand on him with a little help for Javier Parker. He is quick as a cat. Yeah, 25-yard gain. 11-12 to go in the half. 6 nothing. Wayne County leaves. Tornado's on the move again. He's got a pretty good hard count, evidently, because he's got Wayne County looking, really taking those steps pretty regularly. Three man front. Three, yeah, three. but you, but you got to you got to watch your ball, guys. There's a quick pass out to the right side. It's going to be caught, and uh, got some blockers. He crosses midfield, breaks a tackle, and sets back inside. And going to get down to around the 41 or so. We'll see where they spot him. They may, may step out of bounds at the 45. We'll see. Got him spotted at the 45. That's good enough for a first down, though. 10 yards. And uh, in the War Eagle territory. Tornado's on the move. Trailing Wayne County 6 to nothing. 10.47 to go in the half. Wayne County's uh, playing for a playoff berth. They got to win one of these last two to get in. Tonight or next week at, uh, at home against West. Quarterback keeper around the right side. And he's off to the races. Kenny down the sideline. He goes. And they're going to get him somewhere down there around the... I can't see where he is. We'll get it spotted in a minute. Somewhere down there inside the 30. He's going to be down around the Wayne County 28, I think. All right. It's going to be another first down. This this offense is, uh, man, they cover some ground tonight. They've been their own worst enemy with a penalty and fumble, a couple of fumbles. But they can really pile up the yardage, and that's what they're doing now. With trading Wayne County 6 to nothing with 10.40 to go in the half. They're in War Eagle territory. Back to throw. There's some pressure, and they're gonna, he's going to break the tackle and gain a yard or two, get back to the line of scrimmage anyway. I believe, let's see, I believe that was Hopkins that had a shot at him. Yep, that was Hopkins, and he had him wrapped up. He spun him around, and he's like a dynamo, man. I mean, he just he spins. And he's, he's quick. Man, he spins. he's like a spin cycle, too. He can sling you off of it. He's quick as a hiccup. Trips left, single man right, single back set for the Tornadoes. 10-11 to go in the half, 6 nothing. Wayne County lead. And uh, Wayne County looks like they jumped off sides again, Kenny. That's not something we've seen this year. Not this much. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is about. Uh, Ball's inside the 25 now. <clears throat> Should be around the 24. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know why all of a sudden our guys are are, are jumping. I mean, the, the thing is, you watch the football. You, you get that out of the corner of your eye, and when the ball moves, then you go. And there's a handoff up the middle and uh, breaks and break through the line of scrimmage, but gets caught and pushed back by Bakari McCall. But he makes it to the 20. Yes, he does. He's getting close down there. It's going to bring up a... Uh, Third and about two. Yes, sir. Right on the money, K Dog. 9.52 and counting in the half. Six to nothing, Wayne County. Tornadoes on the move. 
Got to have two big stops right here. They bring big number 70 in, so I wonder if he's going to get the ball. <laughs> Woo. He's a big one. Big mystery question Man. here. <laughs> All righty. There's your snap, and he does, Kenny. There's a the handoff, and he's going to get himself a first down. It looks like it in some. He's going to get down there. It looks like maybe inside the 15. He should get to uh, the 17s, probably, where they're going to give him a spot. And actually, they give him the 15. 9-18 and counting. Tornado's up, ready to go again. Trading by six with a first down in the red zone. That quarterback kind of stands sideways sometimes to take that snap. He's one leg way out in front of him. There's going to be a handoff up the middle, and they're going to hang on for dear life as he gets down there around the 10. Yeah, and they're, they're doing a lot of holding. <laughs> A lot of holding in there. Second down for the Tornadoes. Looks like he might have got about five. 8.42 to go in the half. Six to nothing. Wayne County lead. It's been, a, it's been a pretty fast first quarter and a half. This part of the third, uh, second has been mighty fast. Two receivers split out to the left. We got ourselves a timeout. Wayne County is going to take another timeout since so they're second of the half. So we're going to take a break to WABO to hear from a sponsor. We'll be back after this word from our messages. Welcome back, everybody. As we're getting ready to start, I'll give a shout-out to my buddy, Ernie Clark. He's uh, uh, listening in to us tonight. Maybe having, I don't know if we got the stream going or not, but Jack and Sue are working on it down there. All righty. Back to the action. And Tornadoes come up with second and five. We got to get down to the five for a person. There's a penalty. Let's see what this is. Offsides Wayne County. That's got to be what five or six times. That's 30, 35, 40 yards already. Yeah, that should be a first down. Yeah. Should bring a first and goal. All righty, 8:25 to go in the half. Six to nothing, Wayne County. A Laurel with their first and goal. Wayne County's giving them a lot of help. Not that they need it the way they're moving the ball. There's a hand off the big man. Here score. he goes. He crashes into the end zone for a touchdown. Ties up six to six. Now, here comes the extra point team. Four. The Tornadoes. 8 19 to go in the half. Let me try this PAT. That's a, man, their kicker's even big. <laughs> I bet mean, he weighs 270. They must have a weight minimum. <laughs> There's a good snap. Kick is up. Looks like it's going to be good. So, with 8.19 to go in the half, Laurel 7, Wayne County 6. Here's a 30-second break to WABO. We'll be back after this one word from our sponsors. One between the bricks. Kenny and I and the WC Web TV crew are up here. Ken Roberts, our video production. Sue Wood, our social media coordinator, working on the uh, stream with Jack West and West Computers. We have a little, you know, a little problem with our signal over here tonight. So I don't know if it's going out on the uh, 
video stream or not, but our listeners here on WABO are getting it loud and clear. And so, good team does what? Answers the score there with the score. There we go. Score. Let's see. Let's be good. Let's be good and answer this thing with a score. All right. There's the big man's going to put a foot in it. He's going to kick it. Uh, it's going to be caught down around the 24, 25. And there's a pool gets spun around and going to crash out to around the 34 or so. So Wayne County, you know, got decent starting field position here. Yeah, that was a uh, nine-play, 84-yard drive. Man, that was a dandy, wasn't it, Kenny? Sure was. Probably 30 yards of that. <laughs> Offside. Off, off but not like they need the help. I mean, that's a pretty high-powered offense the Tornadoes got down there. They look good. All righty. Carter Hankins and company making their way back out. Charlie Evans in the backfield. Abney and uh, Poole are kind of in the wings, the wing spots here. Man in motion. Carter's moving right, looking to throw, going to fire one out there. It's going to be caught by Abney. He got it around the 40. So a nice little gain there, nice little throw and catch. Probably get about six yards. Stop the clock with 8.04. All right, here comes Hankinson Company. 8.04 to go in the half. Laurel leads seven to six. Wayne County's had a missed extra point last week and this week. Pools in motion, they're gonna be a handoff and uh, he handed it to, uh, I believe, Evans and he's gonna come up short of the line of scrimmage. Great defense by uh, the Tornadoes and he never had a chance. Third down for Wayne County. That drops the ball carrier for a loss. Third and five for the War Eagles. Hudson checks in, as does Braden Mills. Braden's been playing some tight end for us. Had a touchdown catch uh, in Natchez a couple of weeks ago. Big third down play right here. The way Laurel's moving that ball. Gonna be another handoff to uh, running back. He's gonna find a little room. Kenny breaks a tackle and crashes hard. And that's uh, what an effort by Troy Evans right there. I thought they had him, but he fought, broke that tackle and just took the crowd with him. Kenny got the first down. Good job, good run. I mean, just putting your head down and going ahead. 7.09 to go in the half. Wayne County trails by one, six to seven. First and 10, Wayne County there at their own 48 yard line with a fresh set of downs. Here they come. Abney and McLaurin are spread out wide both ways. There's going to be another handoff to Evans, and uh, they're going to trip him up, and he's going to get across midfield. Barely. Let's see where they spot him. Looked like he got to the 49, but they're going to put him at the 50. Yeah, he got a couple of yards there. All righty. Should be like a second, eight. On the money. K money. 628 and counting in the half, seven to six Laurel lead. Wayne County scored first, but missed the PAT. <clears throat> and here come the War Eagles uh, line of scrimmage. McLaurin and Abney are both spread white. Everybody else is in tight. They're gonna be a handoff to Evans and they're gonna he's gonna break a tackle, Kenny, and fight to get back to the 50. He'll wind up picking up a yard. <coughs> Bring up a third down with 552 in the counting and, a, and counting in a one point lead for the Tornadoes. They're at the 49 of Laurel. Well, these are not the kind of third downs you want to see. Uh, <laughs> you, you want a third and less than five. Oregon's come up to the line of scrimmage. A little different formation here. Got two guys to the right. Tight end on the left side. There's back to throw. He's got some time. He's going to fire one out there. It's going to be caught and out of bounds short of the first down. Uh, that's McLaurin is going to catch it about three yards short of the first down and run out of bounds. So it looks like the Oregon's going to line up at fourth down here to try to 
hammer out this next three yards here with 5.16 to go in the half. Wayne County trailing by one, seven to six. Here comes the big package in. Oh, Billy Cooley, they might just hand it to him. He's got a little running experience out here. Tonight. I don't know. He's <laughs> he, 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 he runs like I do. He, run, he rumbles. Sort of like watching fibered milk come out of a milk jug. <laughs> big fourth down play right here, Kenny. Big fourth down. Evans is going to get the handoff. He's going to get the first down. He runs over, breaks a tackle. You know what that? You know what he reminds me of? Running that ball like that, Michael McLaughlin. Yes, he, he sure really does. does. He he's a powerful, strong runner. He wraps that football up and it just rams into folks and knocks them down. First down, Wayne County. They're at the 37 yard line of Laurel with a fresh set of downs, trading Laurel by seven to six. 4.56 to go in the half. Here come the War Eagles with a fresh set of downs. They're stay, staying in the, well, they got Hopkins in here at a wing, or age back. And uh, gonna be another handoff to Choi Evans up the middle and he's gonna run and the pile moves. Good good effort up front. And now uh, there's a late penalty comes in, Kenny. That might've been a face mask. He got about four or five on the carry. Let's see what the flag. Kenny's calling face mask. Let's see. That's what it looked like to me, but now I'm not sure what they're going. It's a seven to six. It's a, you're right, Kenny, as usual. It's tough being right all the time. It's a, it's a burden. <laughs> all righty. But it's a short version, so. First down, Wayne County got to move the chains. They're down here at the 27-yard line with a fresh set of downs. 4.37 to go in the half. Hankins, is, Carter's coming over to get some instructions from Coach Hankins. 17 seconds on the snap clock. Plenty of time. Everybody's bunched in there tight. And here comes a man in motion and going to hand the ball off to Evans again. And he's going to just plow forward for a yard maybe. They've had some luck with that on this drive, but well defended by the Tornadoes on that play. Give him a yard. Yard to make for a first down is somewhere down here around the 17. He didn't get as good a spot as I thought he should have got. 4.18 to go in the half, seven to six, Laurel lead. Wayne County's looking at a second nine. The ball's at the 26 of Laurel. Wayne County's still in the huddle, 16 seconds on the snap clock. They're going to break the huddle at 12. Come up, everybody's in tight. And we've got uh, an official timeout. Official timeout. Let's see what this is about. Something about the chain, looks like. We've had some chain issues this year. We had some big chain issues over in Natchez to get the game started, but it looks like they got the kink out of it. Well, that helped us out anyway. <laughs> Ready to go. Back up the line of scrimmage. Hankins is going to be under center. Evans is behind him. There's a man in motion, and he's going to motion man is going to get it. He's going to might get the corner, can he? And he does. He's at the 20, cuts back inside. Going to pick up a couple cutting inside. Going to probably be a yard or two short of the first down. I believe, I believe that was Cameron McLaurin on the carry tonight on that play. Give him the old number one. Third down and about one or two yards to go. 3.29 to go in the half. Seven to six. Laurel lead. Wayne County's uh, got a third down and short situation here. In the red zone. Sure, with this offense of uh, Laurel, you sure need to take advantage of your red zone opportunities, that's for sure. And Wayne County is certainly trying to do that right now under center. And uh, Anthony's going to get a little misdirection there. The nice run, Kenny's going to get down inside the 10, I do believe. Or somewhere close to yeah, it. just a just a good job on that inside inside trap and uh, we have first down for Wayne County and I believe let's see where the guy is going to be should be around the uh, ten yard line maybe yep first and goal from the ten with two fifty to go in the half Wayne County is behind seven to six but got a fresh set of downs here at the ten so let's see what the War Eagles can muster up down here is probably some pretty tough sledding but. See if the War Eagles are up to the task. There's a man in motion, and he's going to get the ball, and he may get on the corner, Kenny, and he does. He got some blocking. He's at the five. He's going to score. That is Bakari McCall, ladies and gentlemen. Do it all, McCall. <laughs> Do it all. 
Do it on the call. What a great run. I mean, nobody touched him. So the War Eagles take the lead, and they'll be going for two here, I do believe. Now, what do you what do you dial up here? You think? I don't know. We need to find out. It's a seven to twelve ball game. Well, Wayne County needs a two point conversion to get back on track. We'll see what they can muster up. They got the big bunch in there. Got to get three yards under center. Hankins. They're going to be the handoff, and he's got the Evans is going to get. It. They're going to cut him down short. So that's going to be. 2.27 to go in the half. Wayne County leads 12 to 7. Here's a 30 second break to WABO. We'll be back after this one word from our sponsor. Welcome back. Kenny, what can you tell us about that drive? You're doing some figuring over uh, there. Sir. 12 plays, 66 yards. Nice touchdown. Well needed, but got the lead. Got a 12-7 lead, and I believe we found us a new place kicker, or a kickoff man anyway, because uh, Bacar McCall has been doing those duties all year, and he's done a good job. But Tonight we see Hankins for the first time, and he's kind of a soccer-style kicker. Bacar is a straight-on guy. And these guys are backed up inside the 10 waiting on this one. Let's see what Carter does here as he approaches the football. He gets ready to put a foot in it, and boom, he does. It's a low-line shot. Skips around down around the 20 and caught on the scoop at the 20, and up the field he goes, breaking through the folks that are the defense line out there. He makes his way up to about the 38 or 39-yard line. A lot of time left here for this tornado offense. 2.23 to go in the half. Wayne County up 12 to 7. Well, I look forward to taking a shot down the field. Um, that Laurel has lived by the big play this year, and they're good at it, and they can burn you in a hurry. <laughs> well, they watched some film from last week. They saw Hattiesburg I mean, can do it too. And they're going to hand the ball off. Wayne County is going to defend it well, Kenny, and a whole bunch of War Eagles are going to be back there and drop him behind the line of scrimmage. Well, this is this is where uh, lost about two yards there, so it'll be second and 12, which doesn't really matter because <laughs> you, not with this bunch. you're looking at two minutes left in the first half, and so I'm, I'm expecting to see the ball in the air, this, this, this play. 7 to 12, Wayne County lead. Back to throw, Kenny Collins moving to his left, looking downfield, and going to fire one out there, and it's going to be caught short of the first down. Clock will continue to run. They're going to spot him at the uh, 45, right on the right on the 45. Going to bring up third down about four, 133 to go in the half, 12 to seven. Wayne County lead. Be good to stop him here because uh, the Tornadoes get the ball to start the second half. Three-man front for Wayne County. There's going to be a quarterback keeper, and he's going to work his way out here to the sideline. Going to get the first down, and then some, Kenny. What a move. I mean, that kid can really, really go. Man, he's quick. 117 to go in the half, 12 to 7, uh, Wayne County lead. But the Tornadoes are in Wayne County territory down here at the 40 with a first and 10 with a with this offense that's a that's a lifetime out there a minute 17 so oh yeah I, they're, they're going to take a shot down the field here in a minute you got that quarterback that can really go in that big bruise and running back and he's strong and fast too and he picks up a block there's one downfield kenny and wayne county's had it uh over overthrown down there <clears throat> not by much uh Devin parker was back there in coverage <laughs> and he was kind of, he kind of looked like he pulled up a little bit there at the end. But anyway, the receiver it, was behind him, and if he catches that football, he's in the end zone. All righty, second down, trips right. Laurel's up, ready to go. Wayne County's defense getting set. Wayne County's going to jump off sides again, and there's another five yards. One twelve. That is beyond me how we're doing that. All righty, that's going to take the ball to the thirty-five. Second down and five for 
three guys out split out to the right. Wayne County's got three guys out there with them. And here's a snap. Quarterback's moving to his left, and uh, he's going to get on the corner, and they're going to snatch him and uh, by the shoulder. And uh, that is Lacey on the stop. What a strong grip he has as he tackled that quarterback with one hand, grabbed him by that sleeve, and just said, not so fast, my friend. Third down and about Did he get five. anything at all? I guess he got, well, I don't know. I guess he got a yard. Yeah. Clock stopped at 105, third down. And uh, trips right, single man left, single back set. Tornadoes have got it set and ready to go. And I think the tornadoes moved that time, or they maybe called timeout. Timeout. Ernest called timeout. So we're going to take a timeout. 30 second break to WABO. Be right back after this word from our sponsor. Uh, our Mississippi Sports Talk Slick Hattiesburg has taken the lead over West Jones 7-6 to six. Now we can't worry about that we got us a fight right here between the bricks and it's uh, 104 to go in the half Wayne County is up 12-7 to seven. it's going to be uh, Laurel's going to get the ball to start the second half So let's see if Wayne County can keep them out of the end zone. Keep them off the board here to end this half here, this final 104. Third down, big third down right here. Quarterback's keeper all the way running up the middle. He broke, breaks through and dragging folks, and there's a flag back here in the back, Kenny. It's going to be a holding call, and that's what Coach Hankins was just going over with the officials. <laughs> He's telling them, you know, they're turning our guys around. The clock is at 58 seconds. Wayne County 12 to 7, 58 seconds in the half. Laurel has, you know, been their own worst enemy tonight. Taking that back out to, back out across the 40 to the 41, 42 yard line to be set up there with the tornadoes with a third down about 12 to go. But that's, they're looking for points. So, uh, I hear the jug heads down here. I'll tell you what, this is a pretty good crowd from Wayne County this turn. It's about equally matched. They, Laurel's got about as many as Wayne County does. Pretty good crowd showed up here for the Wayne County contingent. Okay, there's a the snap. Back to throw. And they're going downfield. Kenny trying to. And he got receivers all over the place. And he's going to just tuck it and try to run. And they're going to hem him up and get him out of bounds. And uh, he's going to have a – it's going to be fourth down. And we'll see. It's going to be fourth down and relatively long with 38 seconds to go in the half. Defensive backs did a good job staying with their guys that time. Kenny had to run it. Well, they did. Fourth down and about seven to go for Laurel. Wayne County leads 12 to seven. And this is a fourth down play for Laurel. They're thinking, I'm sure, touchdown all the way. Back to throw, he's moving to his right. He's going to fire, man's wide open over there and they throw it to him and uh, Wayne County's gonna get him tackled. But he's going to get the first down and stop the clock, I do imagine. I think he might have gotten out of bounds. I don't know. It's the other side. We can't really tell. But uh, everybody went downfield. One guy stayed behind. He's camped out over there outside the numbers and got that first down. 31 seconds to go in the half. 12 to 7. Morrigal lead. But the Tornadoes is on the move. Trips left. Single man right. Big old running back there with the quarterback. The jugs are, the jug heads are making their presence known down there. Back to throw. There's some pressure. Hopkins is going to get after him and going to suck him back outside the 30. So big play by Hopkins. And let's just see what Hopkins has been up to here. Let's see. Sacks on the year. He's got five. He's a leading sack man, and he's got six now. So 
There's 25 seconds left to go in the half. 12 to 7, Wayne County. Uh, kind of stick around here and see what's going on. I'll tell you what, Kenny, this is uh, it's been a pretty interesting half. It really has. Well, it, it, it has. And uh, it's gone fast. Yes. Seems it, to it me. It went by very quickly. Laurel will get the ball to start the second half. And uh, but right now we've got 25 seconds to go in this half. In the Wayne County lead, Laurel's back out on the field ready to go. <coughs> and here comes the Wayne County defense. Been instructed how to approach this final 25 seconds. They take the field. All righty. Back to throw. He got time. Buys himself some more time. Gets his throws, throws downfield. Got a man out the back of the end zone, Kenny. So that's incomplete. And this leaves 17 seconds on the clock. He certainly got plenty, plenty of arm. Good coverage by Wayne County. Yeah, we had three or four guys back there. <laughs> Of course, I guess we all know they're headed to the end zone. <laughs> well, that's where you got to get to get points. That's right. Meet you at the end zone. Not so fast, my friend. All righty. 17 seconds to go in the half. Third down and, I don't know, long way 17. to go. 17. 17. And uh, that 17 seconds on that. 17 to go with 17 left. All righty. We got something going on here. Okay, they ran out of time. Trying to get their play in. In the grand scheme of things, that probably not going to hurt them too much. It'll be longer to go for a first down. They're looking at the end zone with 17 seconds to go. Hear that wind blowing in this microphone, folks. Chilly out here tonight. All right, there's some pressure, and they get after him, and they sack him. And that is, again, Hopkins with his second sack on the night. And he expands his uh, sack total on the year. He's going to seven. And i tell you what, the Wayne County faithful are showing their approval here tonight. And the coaches are happy. And uh, what a wait. <laughs> Big stop, Kenny. Big stop. Yeah, it was. The hat brings our first half to a close with the score of Wayne T County 12, Laurel seven we're going to take a break and then we're going to be back with the sleepy sam's mattress club halftime show and our guest Alyssa singletary head coach lady war eagle softball will return right after this word from our sponsors
Wayne County's rushed the ball 23 times for 93 yards, uh, 24 times for 113 yards for Laurel. Wayne County's two or three passing, uh, four of six for the Tornadoes. The Tornadoes got 41 yards through there. Wayne County's got 10. No fumbles or none lost there, of course, for Wayne County. Two fumbles, one loss for <coughs> Laurel. Wayne County's been penalized seven times for 40 uh, yards and five uh, times for 45 yards for Laurel. Punts average. Laurel has not punted. Uh, Wayne County's punted once for 40 yards. Return yards, Wayne County's got uh, 81 uh, compared to 27 for Hattiesburg. Third down conversions, to two of six for Wayne County, three of five, which is pretty good for uh, Laurel, and then two of two on fourth down conversions. And man, those fourth down conversions were huge, weren't they, They Kenny? sure were. And then uh, Laurel's one of one. Time of possession, Wayne County, 12-31, uh, 11-29 uh, for Laurel. Tackles, uh, Hopkins has uh, got five tackles, and he's got those two sacks. Man, that kid, he's fun to watch, isn't he? He's got a high-speed motor, doesn't he? And, you know, and he, he plays with such excitement. If you see him after the game, you know, he's just his big eyed and his hands are working. He's just so excited about playing football. I love that kid. He's awesome. Uh, Rushing, Choi has got 12 carries for 49 yards. Carter's two or three passing for 10 yards. Kenny, I uh, know we blew through that pretty fast, but just a first half observations from, from k Dog. What, what do been, you think? It, it's been fairly even, I think, between the two teams. We, we had one good opportunity we couldn't convert on. That was after the turnover. Yeah. And uh, you, you felt like if you get some points there, you'd be in pretty good shape now. You know, the, the thing that's hurting us right now is this lack of extra points. Uh, we, you know, we, we had the first one blocked. We didn't, went for two on the second one, couldn't get it. So, you know, you got a five point differential here. And, and uh, you know, you, you, you get six and give up seven, uh, the numbers catch you yes, they after a little bit. So, yes, they do. real important for us to come out here and start the second half and uh, not let Laurel get a drive together and get points. Uh, because then you're down by two, and uh, and so you just you, that differential just keeps growing. So at, at some point, uh, you know, we're gonna have to make a conversion of some sort, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can shut Laurel down here on this first possession of the third quarter because it's 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 a big deal. It sets sure. tone for the second half. Yeah, you know, and I tell you what, I don't, you know. I don't know what happened. I mean, our kicking, our extra points. Uh, we've been making those things. So, you know, the, well, when we can kick them, yeah. Yeah, I mean. You know, you know. Uh, the breakdown in the blocking. And, and it's so fundamental. I mean, you line up, and there's nothing complicated about it. When you line up for an extra point or a field goal, you block down. Yeah. And if you block down, you know, you plug that hole. Yeah. And so that's something that big mistake uh, – on our part the last two weeks, and it's cost us. It cost us last week, cost us the ball game in essence. Yeah. I mean, you you know, you, you don't know what would have happened in overtime, but mm. you, you at least it stood a chance. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so it's, uh, of course, we got, you know, we got a bunch of kids that, they, you know, this is their first year to really start and play, and uh, we've been all over the map <laughs> on trying to find uh, an <laughs> offensive line and guys to block. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, – I'll tell you, folks, this is one of the better coaching jobs I've seen in a long time because Coach Hankins came in and, uh, you know, he's trying to get the program back together. COVID took a big toll on it last year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was one of the things Cat struggled with when, you know, Coach Gandy, when he was here, Cat Gandy was, you know, trying to keep players on the field. Yeah. And when you got them on the field, you couldn't play, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and, and we saw a flash of what they could do when we went to Picayune last yeah. year and beat them at their house. So uh, it's just sort of in a transition time here. And, and uh, But I'll tell you, Coach Hankins has got these kids playing hard. And uh, we we might not have played very well a time or two, but we play hard. Yeah, play hard. And uh, <clears throat> we didn't get a chance to play hard some more because Carter's fixing to kick this thing. <laughs> Fixing to kick this thing off. I'm trying to decide if I want to stand up and take more wind <laughs> or stay bundled up in this little hole I'm in over here. Decisions, I'm decisions, cold. I don't say. know about you, but I'm cold. But anyway, it's fixing to warm up. Hankins approaches the ball, puts a foot in it. It's going to be a line shot that's going to bounce around there, squib around with 20, scooped up around the 17. Straight up the field goes the Tornadoes. 
and going to be out around the 40 with a pretty good field position to start their inaugural possession of the second half. All righty. You know, they hadn't punted tonight. They turned the ball over, but uh, early on, Laurel, you know, hurt themselves pretty good bit with some holding penalties and a defensive penalty and, uh, and then the fumble. But uh, let's see what the Wargle defense can muster up against this high-powered bunch from Laurel right now. And they are talented. They're big up front. They're fast outside. And that quarterback can just, man, he can go. And then there's this guy that's running the football that just ripped off about 10 right up the middle. He's just huge and fast and big and strong and hard to find an answer for that. Well, they've gone to power football. They lined up that time, and uh, they've got a uh, – uh, H-back or flank or whatever you want to call it, set inside, and they're just going to line up and outnumber us over there on that side. And there they are at the line of scrimmage, second and one. There's going to be a handoff. And, oh, they're going to get a hand on him behind him for a loss, Kenny, and he's uh, Hopkins got back there and got him three or four yards behind the line of scrimmage, but guess what? He got loose and got the first <laughs> down. <laughs> yes, he did. He's in War Eagle territory. 11.20 to go in the third quarter. 12 to 7 Wayne County lead, and the Tornadoes are marching there inside uh, Wayne County territory with a fresh set of downs and at the line of scrimmage, ready to go. And they're just going to line up and run behind, run to that right side over there. And there they go again. And that's the big run man. Trap. He's going to wind up getting another. <clears throat> I don't know if he's going to get a first down or not. Going to be a yard or two short. Hey, he's fixing Boy, he's a load. He sure is. And Coach Ernest has decided he's just going to line up and just pound the big guy. Well, it's it's working like a charm right now. It's going to be second down, about two yards to go. They're at the 40. Looks like they're maybe the 38 to get for the yard line. They're, of course, in Wargo territory. 10-42 to go in the third, 12-7 Wayne County lead. Laurel on the move, and there's another handoff and another gain and a first down as he reaches the 35. They're leaning on the big man. Letting the big dog eat. I'd run him till his tongue dragged around. <laughs> big guy like that. 10.30 to go in the third. 12 to 7 Wayne County lead. And the Tornadoes are on the move. On the ground on the move. <coughs> Up the line of scrimmage. Looking over for instruction from Coach Ryan Ernest. And here they come. Got three receivers bunched up out here to the left side. Got a man like an H back over here on the left side, and the big guys behind him. They're going to keep doing what they've been doing, and they're going to run there, and they're going to get a pretty nice gain. Going to get to the 30, probably get about Number seven, Cameron Benjamin is the ball carrier. five yards or so. We'll see. See where they spot him. I may be off on that. Shorter than I thought it was. Give him two or three. Just giving him more credit than he, than he was due. Second down, about seven. 9.40 to go in the third. 12 to seven, Wayne County lead. Quarterback's looking to the right side. He's got the edge out there. He turns upfield, there's a penalty, and he gets struck hard by Bakari McCall and another defender out there. It's gonna be a hold. <clears throat> Back him up a little bit. 9.29 to go in the third. Boy, and they're good at it too. Should put it back out here around the 41, I think. Wayne County's offensive line going over some things down here together. Uh, Pruitt, Green, Carter, sophomore, Ro Roscoe, and Pitts. All right, back to the defense. Wayne County's defense is on the field, and there is a penalty flag by this uh, over here on the sideline in front of the Wargo bench. Come in offside. They lined up in neutral zone. So Laurel is uh, again had a little problem in their own worst enemy. They got the ball back out of here. Second down and uh, 22 or three yards, I'm guessing, to go. 909 to go in the third. They're back out around their 47 with a second down. Now they're going to look to throw it, and uh, they're going to get after. They're going to fire one out there that's going to be caught at the 40. Gets down and scoops it up, makes the catch. Going to bring up uh, a third down, and they're going to be outside the chains. About five yards. Going to be <clears throat> 15 yards to go. Third and 15. 8.40 to go in the third. 
Big third down play right here, K-Dog. I'm watching number 10 over there. The number yeah. two guy on yeah. the far-hand side. I believe he had some luck earlier. And they're going to hand off the big guy, and he's got to get, but it closes up. Kenny, and they're going to be fourth down at about 10 or 11 to go from the 35. See what Coach uh, Ernest Paris Evans checks in. Mills checks out. Fourth and 11, and uh, Tornadoes, uh, why not? Punt doesn't do you a lot of good in a situation like this. So 7.50 to go in the third. Big third down right here for the War Eagle defense. They can hold and get this ball and uh, away from the Tornadoes and keep the Tornadoes from taking the lead here on the first possession of the second half. This is a great opportunity to do it right here. Back to throw. Got all the time in the world. Fires one across the middle. It's going to be... Intercepted. No, he knocked it down. He had a play on it. Couldn't reel it in. That was McCall. He sure had it, but it probably did it well, well to let yeah, it go. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, it's, it's a good thing. It's do it all, McCall, just uh, <laughs> let that one go. All right, so the War Eagle defense prevails with a little help from the Tornadoes. They did that early in the first half, shot themselves in the foot a little bit, and Wayne County was able to capitalize. Wayne County gets a little help from the Tornadoes here on the penalties, and uh, – Takes the ball over at their own 36 with the first and 10, 7.30 to go in the third and a 12 to seven lead. So here comes Carter Hankins and company ready to go again. Well, what you need, what the doctor's ordering right here is a nice long drive with touchdown at the end of it. Yes, sir. Let's see, K-Dog dial that up for us. Hankins on the center and there's gonna be a hand of the man's got a sweep at McLaurin and he's gonna get a, out to the 40 for a decent gain on the first down, four or five yards it looks like. And that was McLaurin. Call it a four-yard gain, second and six, 7-11 counting in the third, 12-7 to seven, Wayne County lead. Well, four yards is okay. I mean, you Take do it every time, three, won't we? three times and you got a first down. All right, there, ball's on the right hash mark. Here come the War Eagles. At the line of scrimmage, everybody's in there tight under center. Hand off to Evans straight ahead, and they, uh, they're going to get a couple of yards. I, maybe one. I don't know. We'll see. K-Dog will sort it out for Looks us. Looks like he picked up a couple out to about the 42. Third and four for Wayne County. The big bunch is coming in. Uh, Cooley's coming in. Lacey's coming in. Hopkins is coming in. Got the big, big bunch out there now. Hudson checking in. He does a number 36. He he does, uh, Hudson, he does a little bit of everything. He, he's, he's on that field a lot, both sides of the ball, special teams. All righty, big third down right here. Got the big boys in there lined up and ready to go, and there's going to be a handoff straight up the middle, and that's going to be a first down as Evans breaks through and is dragging folks down to the 35. And uh, they're going to put him out just inside, the right at the 35. So, a big play, Kenny. Yeah, I thought he got out into 34, yeah. but, hey, whatever. I'll give up a yard there. There's a flag. Looks like it's going back against Wayne County. I didn't see. It's down there at the 42. I didn't see what happened. That was the call. I don't know what it was, but that one hurts a little bit. So, Wayne County is a legal substitution. I think we had 12 guys on the field. That may have been why. Maybe why we had so much luck there. <laughs> well, you hate that one to get away from you. First down, that's going to take them. Man. Oh, that's a big one. I, I thought that was one. a five-yarder. Oh, what did it, uh, it took it back inside the, the 30. Man, that was a big one, Kenny. It must have been 12 guys on the field. My guess is that we're going to punt. Well, it's third down. Well, I guess it is. It yeah. Third and what, 17? Maybe where's where is the ball? <laughs> it's somewhere down there around the 30, maybe inside the 30. Actually, it's 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 on the no, 29. Yeah, yeah, 29. So big third down play. I mean, a long way to go. Back to throw a pressure. Going to throw one. It's going to get batted down. And uh, now we're going to get a punting situation. So, the War Eagles uh, missed a golden opportunity right there. 
Laurel, they returned the favor. Laurel helped them out a little bit, and they said, well, we'll, turn, we'll, we'll help you out a little bit. Well, and we, you know, Laurel hurt themselves with penalties, and we did too. Yeah. All right, there's a pretty good wind blowing. It looks like it's probably blowing in the face of Mills down here. He's standing at the 19 to accept the snap from Hudson. 520 to go in the third. There's a good snap pressure. High spiraling punt that's going to be caught at the 30. Four and he's going to try to get around the right side and Wayne County's going to tackle him. He runs laterally there and he doesn't get anywhere. And that's, uh, I believe Hudson the snapper. Let's see who that was. 37 yard punt. 37 yard punt. Let's see that. Get that tackle there. That was number 20 on the stop. Tanner Richard, Tanner Cochran, the junior defensive back. So the Tornadoes are inside their own 35. They're at the 34 with the first and 10. 5-11 to go in the third, 12-7 Wayne County football game. Okay, now they're out of the power formation. <coughs> All right, here they are spread out. And uh, back to throw, going to fire one. It's going to be... Little pass out there, a short pass turns into a nice game, probably eight or so yards. We'll see where they spot him. I'm giving them more yards than they need there. They're going to make it out to about the 40, 41. No, that's right, 41 yard line. Second and four. 450, 450 to go in the third quarter. 12 to 7 Wayne County lead. Tornadoes with a second down, four yards to go. Quarterback's going to keep it, and he's going to be like a rocket, and he's going to cross midfield, and they're going to tackle him somewhere down around uh, 13, the 40. Oh, going to be a hold over there on that side. I'll tell you what. He saw it from a long way off. I'm glad he saw the flags over well, there. Well, it was a little obvious. <laughs> I thought, but I, but what I know. Well, they're talking about it. I'm going to put my money on you, Kenny. I'm going to call you K money for nothing. There you go. Whoop, there it is. 4.34 to go in the third, 12 to 7. Wayne County lead, and the Tornadoes have hurt themselves again. This will be from the spot of the foul, which will be the 39. So that should put it back on the 29. Hattiesburg's uh, got an interception, is leads 13 to nine right now. In their battle with West Young. What was that, what was the score you said? I'll uh, get that to you in a minute. Let's see here. 13 to nine, Hattiesburg up over West Jones. All righty, there's a, tries to run up the middle. Great defense right there and they shut him down. I think he lost yardage on that too, Kenny. Lost a little. So, uh, had it, had it, had it. 27. We found out how good Hattiesburg was last week. West Jones sure getting a did. taste of it tonight. <laughs> All right, third down and a long, long way to go. And he's got the ball spotted to 27. He's got to get here to the 44 for a first down. 342 to go in the third. Wayne County up 12 to 7. You need a big stop here. Back to throw. Hopkins is got trying to get to a guy open here in the up. middle. There's going deep. Got a man behind everybody, and he makes the catch, Kenny. And uh, there you go. We've been waiting on that to happen all night. And, uh, you know, we knew they could stretch it. And they stretched it right there. And, man, third and a mile to go, and they convert big time. Want a touchdown saving tackle, too. Yes, sir. Three nineteen to go in the third. Wayne County leads 12 to 7. Laurel is on the move. They're down there right around the 20. 21 yard line of Wayne County with a fresh set of downs. 48 yard catch. Hand off up the middle. A lot of room. Making his way down. I don't know. 
covered a lot of ground on that carry. Get down to around the uh, 13 or so, 14. Yeah, a couple of three yards short here. Second and two for the Tornadoes. They're going to be a handoff, and they're going to drop him behind the line of scrimmage. Kenny, I think Wayne County's got the ball. Wayne County's got the football, Kenny. I don't know what in the world happened. <laughs> Just sort of a scrum over there. Uh, I know. I know McCall and Hopkins are, I think, uh, are celebrating. I think do it all McCall must have gotten it. I don't know how he did it, but they got the ball away from them. Great defensive play right there. The Wayne County backed up at their, their, their own 19 now with a – 12 to 7 lead, 2.30 to go in the third. Big, big turnover. Yeah, now this is where you need to get. You, you caught a break now. You got to capitalize. Uh, you don't need you? to take advantage of it. Well, let's see what Wayne County can do with this thing. Everybody's bunched in there tight. And the ball, try to get a guy on it. Got some blockers, Kenny, if he can get by that one, but he can't do it. And they're going to drop him for a loss. It looks like that thing was going to work. And then all of a sudden, it just caved in. Speed. Yeah, that'll get you. Speed. We had uh, we had them, had them blocked on the outside, but we couldn't get to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't as much of a loss as I thought it was. It's second and 12, 206 to go in the third, 12 to 7, Wayne County lead. Wayne County's been in a couple of battles here the last, well, all of them this year have been yeah. really close ball games. Well, not our, these last few have anyway. Natchez was close. Last week was, you know, one pointer, and then this week we're in another struggle. There's going to be a little misdirection right there. Nice play and a nice run, and they're going to get a good gain out of uh, our Cameron McLaurin right there. Don't have a personal foul over here, I think, against Laurel. They spotted him. He's got back inside the chains here to pretty handily. Looks like you're right, Kenny. Looks like Carl Laurel's uh, backing up. We're at 137 to go on third, 12 to 7, Wayne County lead. And waiting for the officials to. A five yarder, the public address man says. First down, Wayne County. Big, big play. We'll take it, Kenny. Well, high school's the only place left where there's a five yard variety, but I'm not sure that was five yards, was it? Ball's on the 29. I guess it was. First down, Wayne County. 137 to go in the third, 12 to 7, Wayne County lead. There's going to be another handoff, and a uh, wide receiver coming in. That may be Abney on that carry. He gets across the 30, so they're, they're moving these receivers in tight and catching them on these little, bringing them in toward the middle, handing the ball to them, and they cut up field, and they're working hard for every yard they're getting. There's not much being given away down there by the Laurel defense, that's for sure. Well, I tell you what, they are uh, they are a good football team, and uh, these guys are quick and they're they're big and physical, and uh, we're we're giving up a lot of weight on both sides of the football. Second down, about nine to go. One minute to go in the third. Twelve to seven, Wayne County lead. And a struggle between the bricks, and there comes a little misdirection there and cuts up field. Nice move by McLaurin, and he's going to get a first down. Really nifty footwork right there. And he, Laurel guy, puts a knee in his back as he gets up off of him. Welcome to welcome to Laurel. <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> Welcome to the Bricks. Yep. Forty four seconds to go in the third, twelve to seven Wayne County lead. Another fresh set of downs on the McLaurin run. Really nifty footwork by Cameron on that carry. First and ten for Wayne County. There's their own forty five. And they're keeping it, playing it pretty close to the vest down here. No surprises. Man, that defensive line for Laurel is huge. There's a stoppage of play. I'm not sure what that was. Delay a game? 
Good call, Kenny. Man, those yards are so hard to come by. You sure hate to lose them. Yes, they are, and it's uh, that should end the third quarter, Marshall. Uh, yes, it does, Kenny. So after three, it's twelve to seven, Wayne County. And Wayne County will come back to start this <laughs> final stanza with a first and fifteen to go. We're going to take a thirty-second break to WABO to hear from some of the sponsors that we're so thankful for, and we'll be back after this one word from our sponsor. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to give a, you know, a, a Wayne County's got a great fan base, and there's a great crowd over here tonight for the War Eagles, but I want to shout out our super fans. You know, Elmer Miller's our super fan of the week, but we got some other folks that help us with our broadcast this way. Freddie Miller, Ben and Barbara Graves, Jeremy Wright, Lester Mitchell, Carly Beasley, Chandler and Cassidy Few, Gary Jackson, Gary Sigler, Trent Odom, Charlie Britton, Elmer Miller, Tommy Miller, and Brandon Jordan, and Marvin Chapman. We appreciate you guys and all that y'all do to help WC Web TV bring Wayne County High School War Eagle football to you. And here we are to start the final stanza. Wayne County's got a 12 to 7 lead. They got a first down and 15 starting at the that they're at their own 40 right now. Here, if you can, you know, it, of course, first and 15 is kind of tough. But if you can, if you can use up clock, use five or six minutes off the of clock, get down, get a touchdown, then that it makes it, a, uh, you know, a, a two-score game, and uh, doesn't leave Laurel a lot of time to do it. And yeah. so that's that's something that we've got to do here. And there's going to be a handoff, and it's going to be well defended, and they're going to stop Choya behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss. Yes, sir. That's a 36. That's going to be a four-yard loss. That's going to be second 19. Oh, my goodness. We hadn't, had, we hadn't thrown much. We hadn't really had, a, had time. We don't have much time back there. Well, we missed a block on the inside there, and that's where that tackle got through. But, again, this is a sort of a put-together offensive line here. And uh, there's a little handoff. It's going to be a minimal gain. It's going to bring up third down and a long, long way to go. And we got an injured war eagle on the field. Uh, that's our uh, sophomore lineman. Offensive lineman, they're going to get him up. That's Carter. He's okay. He's hopping a little bit. But he's, uh, I don't know. He's, uh, have trouble putting weight on that. On that wheel. Yeah. He's coming on off. We're at 11 10 to go in the football game. 12 to 7 Wayne County lead. Let's give it up for 76. And uh, we give a shout out down there to Camarius Carter, sophomore offensive lineman, making his way off the field. I got to tell you, that's a little. Uh, that's a good defense. That's two pretty good defenses. Ours hadn't been real shabby tonight, at least up to this point. Uh, we we played well defensively. Another uh, sophomore offensive lineman coming into the game. Quindarius Elijah Walker. Third down. We'll see it's big. Carter's going to – there's a penalty. Stops that one right off the bat. Looks like – Hankins was going to look to throw. They're going to call us for motion. I'll tell you what, both of these offenses have been their own, have just have been their, I'm not going to say their own worst enemies because these are two good defenses, but, man, these offenses, neither one of them has done anything to help themselves tonight, Ken. No, no, not at all. The ball is at the 33. we got to get across midfield down to the 45 to get a first down on this third down in a country mile. Tell you what, the last couple of weeks we started both games with ten toes, and we managed to shoot them all <laughs> off. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Everybody's bunched in there tight. I don't know. We got a man up, man out here. Got a timeout. Okay. 
Coach Hank says, let's just stop this thing and talk about it on this big third down right here. We're going to take a 30-second break. The WABO will be right back after this word from our sponsors. Okay, well, hello, everybody. Hello, Kenny. Hey there. How are you? How y'all doing? <laughs> hello, Ma. Hello, Paul. Remember the Ma and Paul Kettle movies? I do. Yeah. I do. I'm, they I'm play them. Wouldn't they play them after McCaffrey Showtime went off on Saturday? Oh, man. Remember Walter playing that piano? Uh, Walter. Boy? Man, yeah. He had a set of glasses that were made out of the best man. plastic known to man because they had... <laughs> Two Coke bottle engines in each side. No Walter could play the piano. They had that. Let's see. What was the other show we were just talking about? Uh, Ma and Paul Kettle. Yeah, Ma and Paul Kettle. Oh, Cameron show time. Dean Martin show usually came on. Yeah, on Saturday <laughs> night. Right. Right He'd there. slide down that pole. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we all kind of, I am anyway, halfway sick up here. <coughs> Need to take a break, but we're going to stay with it here between the bricks. Somebody else call. What did Laurel call timeout? I don't know, Kenny. Or are we still on our original timeout? It's been a long one. I think I'm going to have a sip of this ice water. Better let me sniff that. <laughs> okay. All righty. Let's see what Wayne County is going to try to do here on third and forever down here. And uh, they're going to just do what they've been doing. And uh, Abney's doing everything he can. He's burning up clock, but he's not going to get much yardage. So Wayne County is going to be looking at a punting situation right here. We just didn't get a good block on the end over here. We, we kind of had a little bit of room for a minute, but Abney just did. He ran out of places to go. Yeah, he was giving it all he had. 9.50, inside 10 minutes to go in the football game. 12-7, to 7, Wayne County lead. And Mills is going to have to punt this one away. He's standing at his own uh, 18. Good snap, some pressure on it, Kenny, and uh, not one of his better punts. Uh, it's going to be down at the uh, about the 48-yard line of Laurel. And they're getting a little pressure on him, but he's not taking. They are. That's that's more pressure than we've had put on him all year. But you know what? He doesn't take a deep set. He, he, no, it's only 10 yards. Yeah. That's the other thing. We we don't have anybody that can snap at 15. So you set it up for 10. I mean you. You do what you got to. Now, Haysburg, I mean, Laurel, rather, has got the ball now on their 47, so they got good field position. 9.39 to go in the football game, 12 to 7, Wayne County lead. Wayne County's playing out front, and out front's the place to be, but they're going to have to play some defense to keep this bunch out of the end zone. There's a pass out there to midfield and a move, and uh, shaking and baking and running down the sideline, and he drops the ball, but it's out of bounds, and there's a flag probably for some late shenanigans going yeah. on over there on the Wayne County defense. I don't know. There, there may be another flag over here. I'm trying to figure out. Sorting it out. Wayne County appears to be backing up. So Laurel has fooled around right quick and got themselves down to the 30 of Wayne County. Uh, 9.30 to go in the game. 12 to 7 Wayne County lead. Defensive ball game so far tonight. Offense is uh, defense is playing great. The offenses are, are, are having some execution problems on both sides. And uh, back to throw, going to fire a bullet out here that's going to be incomplete. Threw it behind his receiver, and the receiver couldn't come back to get it. Stops the clock with 9:27 to go. Seven to twelve. Wayne County War Eagle lead. Tell you what, 12 out here for Laurel. That, that wrestler has got him. He's got a motor under him, too. Yes, sir. He's, he's wanted to beat him deep a while ago, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. And there goes your big man running the ball. He's got some room. He 
cannot trip him up, and he's running through and over everybody. He's going to get a first down. One guy is not going to tackle him. Not going to happen. Not unless he's as big as he is. <laughs> That's a first down for Laurel inside the 20, down there around the 16 of Wayne County. So they're in the red zone with a fresh set of downs, trading 12 to 7. But now they're threatening, are the Tornadoes. They fumbled the ball a couple of times, turned it over tonight. And I guess Wayne County would like to see him turn it over again right now. Laurel's got other things in mind. They handed the big man again, and he's running and dragging folks, and uh, penalty flags coming down. He's, in, he's inside the 10. We'll wait, that will sort out what the penalty is. Elijah Davis, sophomore, checks in. That's a young bunch of War Eagles out there, Kenny. It's against Wayne County. It's going to be first and goal. Looks like they're inside the five down there with a first and goal. 8.58 to go in the game, 12 to 7. Uh, Wayne County lead, but Laurel is threatening right now. Wayne County has missed both extra points. They missed the first one, went to two, and didn't make it. So. Two touchdowns, 12 points. This touchdown right here put Laurel ahead, and uh, they're going to get the touchdown by the quarterback on that carry. So, with 8.44 to go in the football game, Laurel takes the lead, 13 to 12. And the tornado siren, great tradition over here in Laurel. So, the tornadoes take the lead. They'll try to expand that lead. It's a one-point lead. They'll try to – no, they're going for two. And uh, they're not going to make it. So. All right, that's interesting. That's, <laughs> I mean, now, I'm going to stay with us going to discuss the numbers. What value would have been in the extra with, with the two? They're trying to put it out of reach for us on a field goal. We can't make an extra <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. I'm, I'm, we'll take it, won't we? I'm with you. I, I just uh, you just I answered got, the question. I didn't got you? no answer. <laughs> I got no real, real good answer for that. Well, hang around. Well, Wayne County is uh, trails by one, 12 to 13. 8:44 to go in the football game. Wayne County has got. Can I repeat that? Has got. To garner some offense here, uh, they're going to have a, any hope. Of course, I guess the defense could score for them, but Wayne County's got to get got to get some offense going. And that defense, man, for for Laurel is really both of these defenses played lights out so far tonight. They really have. Wayne County's return guys, deep guys, are standing back here on the 21, 22 yard line. Laurel's big man's going. Put a big foot into it. It's going to be caught at the 20. And uh, McCall's got it. Looking for somewhere to go. And he takes off up the middle, Kenny. And he's going. And uh, he's still pushing his way across midfield. So do it all, McCall. He's going to get Wayne County across midfield down to around the 47, 48-yard line of Laurel. So that may be the spark Wayne County needs. Well, it, he just, uh, man, he just needed just a, he couldn't get quite enough daylight to get his, kick it, his afterburner. It in. was close to being broke. <laughs> All righty, at the 48 of Laurel. Here comes Carter Hankins and company. It's good to see our uh, sophomore offensive lineman Carter back out there. Kenny Big, number 76, he's okay. Back out for some more action. Right, Pitts over, over the ball, getting ready to snap it. Let's see if Wayne kind of gets some offense going. There's going to be a handoff right there. and. Uh, Choi's going to break it outside. They miss a tackle. He's going to hurdle one and get upended. And uh, the ball came loose when he hit the ground. They're going to rule him down. And was that Choya? Yeah, that was Choya. And he got the ball. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah, so that's a moot point, isn't it? I looked like a disaster to start with, but he made a break, break a tackle, broke a tackle in that. A nice game. One of the better games we've had in a while. Going to bring up second down about six, maybe five, 825 to go in the football game, 12 to. 13 is the score with Laurel on top by one. Wayne County's, uh, if they ever need to muster a little offense, now's the time to do it. There's a snap. 
Gonna hand the ball to Edney, and he's gonna make a step or two. It might get a yard or two. We'll see where they spot him. It's gonna bring up third down. It looks like around three or so. Got the ball at about the 41-yard line. So it's third down and about three with 7.49 to go. So you're gonna have, you're definitely gonna have two downs to, to make to make three. Evans is in the backfield behind Hankins is under center. It's gonna be the handoff is gonna, oh, they handed off to the H-back coming around and he slipped and lost a yard or two. That's number 45 on the carries. First, that's Kevin Wally, a, a freshman running back. So that's gonna bring up fourth down and uh, about four yards to go. So Wayne County, the ball is at the 42 of Laurel. So uh, Wayne County doesn't get this first down. Then we got a timeout. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a timeout and be back after this one word from our sponsors. Welcome back, everybody. Here's a report from our Mississippi Sports Talk roving reporter, the Slick Lizard. Hattiesburg, with 11 minutes to go in the football game at West, is up 20 to 9. So it looks like Hattiesburg is uh, on top of West Jones at the moment. But right now, we got bigger fish to fry. We got a fourth down and about, I don't know, four yards to go and, a, and trailing by one here between the bricks. A big, big play right here, this fourth down play right here. I'm not going to say it could be the ball game, but it could sure help a little bit to get this first down and uh i don't know they're gonna, not gonna make it i gonna make it not gonna make it so wayne county's gonna turn the ball over down and i tell you what laurel is some kind of fired up right now at that time out they were jumping up and down to celebrate and that that bench is going nuts so uh wayne county uh, turns the ball over on downs laurel's gonna get it first and 10 at their own 40 with a one point lead Wayne County's offense has been non-existent here in the second half, wouldn't you say? Yes. All righty. Here come the tornadoes. Wayne County's defense is going to have to pull this one out for them. It's going to need to stop by getting the ball back for, for, them, for the offense right now. And there's going to be a handoff up the middle. They're going to saw him down after a chop him down after about a one or two yard gain. Big number seven. Running straight up the middle there. They're going to get, looks like, you know, going to get about two or three out of that. I didn't think he had that much, but he does. Second down. I didn't and think he got three, but. Second and seven. With their own 43. Wayne County faithful are making noise. The band's playing and the cowbells are ringing and the jugs are shaking. And it's just, a, you know, the jug heads are making their self heard tonight. Second down, there's gonna be a handoff the big man and he's gonna spin him around and gonna have a short game, gonna bring up third down. So there's a flag on the play. Hopkins says it's against Laurel. It's gonna be another hole. Officials getting it set up, see which way they're going to go. They're backing it. It's against Wayne County. So that's a big, that's a big one. Face mask, I think they said, Kenny. I don't know. I didn't uh, see Well, it. they did. I didn't see it. I saw a hold. So that's going to bring the tornadoes down here to the 41 of Wayne County. They got a fresh set of downs and a one-point lead with 6-11 to go in a football game. And Wayne County has just not been able to muster up much offense here in the second half but the tornadoes are working on it right now and they're going to get about four or five yards on first down carry right there looks like Boy, gonna, that was huge too gonna get down to the 36 or 37 yard line i 
I just dare say that Wayne County not, cannot really afford to give up any more points. I mean, another touchdown will make it a, you know, a two-score game. Second down, six for Laurel. They get to the 31 of Wayne County. They'll have themselves a first down. There's a handoff up the middle and uh, going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play right there by, guess who, number 23, Hopkins. Going to bring up third down, about seven. Five away to go in the football game. One-point ball game. Laurel leads by 13 to 12. Fifteen seconds on the snap clock. 4:48 and counting on the game clock. And big third down play right here, K Dog. Wayne County going to have to get this ball back without giving up any points to have a shot at this, have a legitimate shot at this thing. And we got a timeout. So Laurel takes timeout. So will we. We're going back to WABO to hear from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back after this word. Between the Bricks, WC Web TV crew here, Ken Roberts, myself, Kenny Odom, Sue Wood, Jack West, West Computers helping with a video stream up here, bringing the ball game to you. We appreciate all the work these folks do to make this happen as our sponsors, and we don't want to forget uh, WABO and all the work they put into this, Jamie, and we appreciate what he does. There's a the snap. Around the left side, he gets ahead of steam, but they're going to tackle him short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down, and I'm telling you what, is there ever a play, a play there was, this is it right now. Fourth down and a couple of yards to go. Uh, you know, at 426 to go in the football game, you could almost say this play right here could be ball game. We got another timeout, so we're going to take – our sponsors are so good to us, we're going to take 30 seconds back to the station here for one more and be back after this word. I'm not going to say this play, it, it, this play is a ball game, but it, it, it very well could be if Laurel gets the first down here with a one-point lead and 426 to go. And uh, there's going to be the handoff, Kenny, and uh, he's going to get that first down, I do believe. So he crosses the 30, and uh, he got a little extra there. So first down and 10 for Laurel. Yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, unless we have a turnover here, yeah. Laurel's going to be able to get it down to a minute and a half or so, uh, even if we're able to stop them. I don't know what's going on. We got some. Uh, what's that? So, about 40. The uh, game, oh, game okay. clock. Getting the clock going. Huh? The play clock. Gotcha. First and 10. For Laurel with a one-point lead, 4-10 to go in the football game. We're in war inside the War Eagle 30 with a fresh set of downs. There's a handoff up the middle, and uh, big man's moving the pile, and he's going to get down uh, inside the 25. Wayne County's defense has really made some plays this year, and if they're going to Wayne County's going to have a chance. Wayne County's defense is going to have to come up with something right here. Looks like they've got the ball spotted at the 24. Got to get down to around the 19 or so. 
to get a first down. 3.30 to go in the ball game. The score is 13 to 12. Laurel by one. It'll be the handoff to the big man. And he's breaking through, Kenny. And he's uh, driving down inside the five. They cannot stop him. He gets to the one. So it's going to be first and goal from the maybe the one or the two yard line. 3.09 to go in the football game. Laurel looking to expand their lead. It's a one point lead right now, and they're about one yard away from expanding that lead to possibly an eight point. But we'll see. Balls, it's just inside the two. First and goal for Laurel. We need a fumble and a scoop and a run back for a touchdown. Turnover would. Would be the only thing that'll save us right here because they can pound this big guy inside and there just ain't no stopping him. And it's a wildcat. And they handed it to him and they, they turned him around. They gave him the touchdown. All righty, touchdown. 2.40 to go in the football game. So it was a 12 to 13 lead and the Tornadoes have scored again. <clears throat> A lot of discussion going on down there. I don't know what the deal is. They did signal touchdown, didn't they, Kenny? Yeah. Yeah, they got it 19 to 12 down there. Now Laurel's uh, lined up, getting ready to go for two again. And I think they've still got seven back at quarterback, so they're going to run him again. They do. Now, if he makes it, that's great, which he does. If he doesn't make that, you know, it's a – it's a one-score ball game, but he made it. So it's a two-score ball game now, 21 to 12. We're going to take a 30-second break to WAB. We'll be back after this word from our sponsor. Welcome back. 2.36 to go. 21 to 12. Laurel lead. Let's see what happens here. Wayne County's got their work cut out for them to get back into this one. Haven't had much success offensively. In a while here. Defense has played really well. There's going to be a kick that's going to be caught by McCall out around the 30, and he's looking for somewhere to go, and he's working his way across the field. And they're going to get him a stop somewhere down there around the 39. Well, you know. This is, uh, we're down to 226. And short of some miracle. There's a flag on the play. Yeah. There's no telling. We probably had a face mask. We got a headgear off. Whatever it is, it's against Laurel. We'll take it. Every, every five yards counts. That'll be worth 15. That's, that's five times. That's five times three. Inside uh, Laurel territory. 21 to six. Wayne, uh, Laurel Lee with 226 to go in the football game. Hankins is back to throw. Got pressure. Gets one rid of one quick to Abney, and Abney hits him in the hands. And he was looking to run before he caught it. Of course, he was pretty well covered, but the incomplete pass stops the clock at 223. Second and ten. The War Eagles are in Tornado territory. It's a Tornado 45. All righty. 
you know, you got you got plenty of time. If you can get some yards, if you get some first downs, you got plenty of time to score once. Of course, if you can score once, and looks like there's a penalty against Wayne County. Yeah, motion penalty. The wheels are falling off of the bus. You're not going to tell Carter Hankins that, though. He says, I don't know about this now. So we still got two minutes and 23 seconds to go in this football game. I'm going to fix to do something about this right now. Hankins got Evans back in the backfield with him. He's looking to throw. There's pressure. He gets one away fast and makes the catch out there. Number two shaking and baking. And uh, I don't think he, he gained some yards, got back close to the original line of scrimmage. Got back to the 46. Gonna bring up third down at about 11 or 12. 205 and counting. They don't think Carter can't throw that thing and complete some passes now. Oh, no, he can. <laughs> but he's got to have some time. He just. Well, and that, that looked like a jailbreak. Yeah, it really Laurel did. Laurel sending everybody. And there they come again. He's moving to his left. He's plants his feet and fires one. That's gonna be. They're gonna Caught. give him the catch? Yes. He caught it. That's. Uh, Number two on the catch. Now, I tell you, that time Carter rolled to the near side here, and he had plenty of room to run. He could have pulled it down and run, but he wouldn't have gotten nearly as much yardage as he got by throwing it. Kid's got a good head on his yes, shoulder. Yes, he does. He is a heady guy. He makes right decisions and nice throw, and Poole makes the catch. First and 10 in Wayne County. They're down there inside the 30. 131 and counting in the football game. Carter's moving to his right, buying some time. He pulls up and throws one on the run out there, and that looks like passing. That was the all over him. But there's the flag, so uh, that's going to be another. It's going to be a penalty against Laurel with 124 to go in the football game. Warrigal's on the move. Put us down inside the 15. Could have a fantastic finish here, Kenny. <laughs> there's been some good ones between you these don't two. Don't know. <laughs> You know, you get a touchdown and an onside kick, and there you go. Anything can happen. Puts the ball about the 13-yard line. So you, you really got to hand it to Hankinson Company here. It is, oh yeah. You know, I mean, I'm talking. I'm talking, of course, Coach Hankins, but I'm talking about Carter right now and the way he's conducting that offense out there, making these plays and making it happen under extreme duress. But uh, he's we taking it on his shoulders. Back to throw. You're going to fire one to the end zone down there, and it's going to be caught oh. for a touchdown. What a throw and catch. And that is caught by, don't tell me. Let's see who that is. I can't get them. That's number two. That's Eddie Poole Jr. on the catch. So, Hankins with a touchdown. You want to say, where's that been? I'm going to tell you, <laughs> that ball went right over the fingertips of the Laurel defender. That was a great throw. Oh, it was right on the money. And, you know, the, 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 the you know, Carter was in the middle of the field, threw it, you know, into the front quarter of the end zone on the line going out of bounds. Just a great throw. Wayne County is going to line up and go for two. They hadn't made an extra point yet. So, I mean, I mean, <laughs> might as well go for two. What a great, what a great play by Wayne County and Carter Hankins. Timeout by Laurel. Laurel takes the timeout. So, let's just stick around. Let's just stick around here. Uh you telling me there's a chance, okay? <laughs> there you go again. There I go again. Well, you know what? You know, it's uh, an onside kick, and you got a quarterback who can throw it. I mean, you get an onside kick and get the ball, you you know, anything can happen. I'm kind of hoping for one of the greatest comeback finishes in Wayne County history is what I'm hoping for. I'd like to be a part of that tonight, wouldn't you? I, I, I don't care if it's the greatest or not, as long as it's a comeback. <laughs> It can be the worst comeback in our history as long as we get back. Oh. I'm good. I ain't going to grade it. I can't say enough about that throw. Man, Man it was, I'm telling you, that was, uh, that's like you draw it up. You know, we talk about extra points. How big are the extra points? We scored three touchdowns. We scored many touchdowns they have. Yeah. You, know? you said that earlier in the broadcast, yeah. so you nailed it. Let's see if Wayne County can convert right here. They're going to be the handoff up there to uh, Evans, and uh, they're going to stop him short. But it really, that's that's really inconsequential because we're going to kick a field goal anyway. I mean, you 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 were going to 
have to. No, I mean. You're going to have to get in the end zone again. Yeah, I mean, you. Uh, and a touchdown will do it. As, as now, great Jack Crystal said, it's of no consequence at this juncture in the contest. <laughs> Man, we've got a what we've got a you know one thing, we we've had some exciting football. Games. Well we have. <laughs> oh we. Oh. I mean yes. last year last week we're down down by a point. This week we're down by three, so two weeks four points and it's just uh you know, for Coach Hankins it's it man it's frustrating. I mean, you know, I mean the guy's he he's trying to uh, trying to piece together uh, with the folks we've had injured, and first one thing or another, he's trying to put all this together, and it's a tough job. And you don't have the number of players that you've had in the past, and you know you don't have the depth that you that you need. But uh, and we don't have, I mean, we don't have size. Uh, there's a lot heart. of stuff we don't have, but we play hard. We got heart. Now Carter hadn't been kicking off all year. Okay, this is his first night that we've seen him kick off. I wonder if he's ever practiced an onside kick. <laughs> well, I got to tell you what, if anybody can kick one, I bet you Carter can do it. Let's see what he comes up with right here. I tell you what, it didn't go the distance. It didn't go the distance. That's going to do it right there. We ain't going to do it. We got a minute and 18 to go. They could fumble a snap or something. Well, I think we're out of timeouts yeah. anyway, so. Well, well, well. You know, if uh, we were thinking we had to win tonight to get in. Do but we know what uh, Brookhaven did against I, Natchez? Brookhaven was beating Natchez. Now, Brookhaven was beating Natchez. It's 20 to 17. Uh, has, 20 to 17, Hasburg recovers the onside kick, one minute left, you know, in the football. It looks like looks like West is going down. Is that, will that be two district losses for them or one? Uh, that would be one for West was undefeated coming in. Oh, okay. All righty. It's just going to be, it's just hard for me to see how in the world we're going to miss playoffs, two district losses, but what, it's just the way the whole thing's yeah. cookies crumbling and Brookhaven, man, they're in the catbird seat because their game next week is south. Yeah. And, uh, they could finish. They're going to win out. Oh, yeah. All righty. There's the big man's going to run the football, and he's going to put his head down and plow down there to a close to the 30. It's pretty much academic right now. There's a 110 to go in the football game, three-point ball game, 21 to eight. Of course, anything can happen. You know, yank that ball out and get it in Hankins' hands one more time. Yeah. All we can we, hope for. We could have a giant dodo bird run across <laughs> the field. And... <laughs> hey, I'm not giving up. Dodo bird or not. <laughs> <laughs> when you could have a herd of buffalo come through the south end zone down here, oh. delay the game. <laughs> All righty, 46, 42 seconds and counting. And uh, there's flags on the play. That'll stop the clock at 31 seconds. Holding, 31 seconds to go in the football game. Score Laurel 21, Wayne County 18. Boy, those extra points are just so big. I mean, you, you know, otherwise we're sitting here tied. Well, we've got two district losses, right? If we lose yeah. this one, West got one. We beat West next week. We'll be ahead of West if we get <laughs> the tiebreaker if we beat West. There's that herd of buffalo. <laughs> I mean, look, you never know. With, with Wayne County and West, it's been all over the map over the past 20 years. And uh, certainly we we'll play Thursday night next week, yeah. by the way, folks. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it. Uh, I do believe. Let's see. Yeah, there's 23 seconds, 46 o'clock. So this one's going to be over. Wayne County is going to lose this football game uh, by a score of 21 to 18. Uh, next week, the War Eagles will close out the regular season at home with a Thursday night rumble with Wes Jones. Remember that you can follow uh, the War Eagles all week on Facebook at War Eagle Football. Special thanks to WC Web TV crew, Ken Roberts, video production, along with Sue Wood, our social media coordinator, and Jack West video stream. And 
not tonight, it's Tony, it's Jamie back at the station, seeing it all comes together for us and you. That does it for tonight. We're about to head back to Jamie at WABO. Kenny and I, along with the rest of the WC Web TV crew, will see you next week for more Wayne County High School Warrior Football. Get us out of here, Jamie.